The submissions for films for the animation Oscar for this year's Academy Awards have been released. Let's take a look at some of them and why it's pretty predictable on what's going to win. The Breadwinner is about an Afghan girl whose father is jailed and has to cross-dress as a boy to support her family. It's a 2D animated film and currently has a 92% on Rotten Tomatoes, if that's important to you. And it's nominated for Best Anime Feature at the 2018 Critics' Choice Award as well. Bird Boy The Forgotten Children is based on a Spanish comic. It's a post-apocalyptic world where Bird Boy is constantly on the run from the police who think he's a drug dealer. Meanwhile, Dinky also wants to escape the island and begins a journey to find Bird Boy in order to aid her. This is an expansion of the Bird Boy short from 2011. It won the 2016 Goya Award for Best Anime Film. The Big Bad Fox and Other Tales, also another 2D animation film, as of Bird Boy, is based on a comic by Benjamin Renner. This was originally going to be a 30-minute TV special, but was later made into an anthology film. There are three segments in it. Renner and his animation team last film was Ernest and Celestine, which was also nominated for an Academy Award in 2014. It, of course, didn't win for reasons I'll discuss later. Cinderella the Cat, a CGI film. The film follows a mute girl named Mia trying to escape her evil stepmother and Kamarora boss. <laughs> Ernest and Ethel, another 2D anime film based on the 1998 graphic novel by Raymond Briggs. The film focuses on a couple's marriage from the 1920s to the 1970s. The comic covers the courtship to the deaths. Next, The Girl Without Hands, another 2D anime film. This is based off of a Brothers Grimm tale. It premiered in 2016 at the Cannes Film Festival. It follows a girl that was accidentally sold to the devil by her father. The devil eventually demands to have the girl's hands lopped off, after which the girl runs away and meets the prince. The rest of the film follows their adventures. In This Corner of the World, another 2D anime film based on the Japanese manga of the same name. Set in the first half of the 20th century, it follows characters before and after World War II. While this is a work of fiction, the film does use real facts and incidents. It has a 98% on Rotten Tomatoes too, if you care about that stuff. Next, one of the most interesting anime films, Loving Vincent. The film covers the life of Vincent Van Gogh. This is a experimental film. The animation is all on oil paintings on canvas by 115 painters. There are 65,000 frames of paintings about an interesting subject. <sighs> I wish I could see this now. Next, Mary and the Witch's Flower. A 2D film based on the Mary Stewart novel, The Little Broomstick from 1971. A girl named Mary discovers a flower that makes her a witch temporarily. This was produced by Studio Punko created by former amateurs of Studio Ghibli. Moomins and the Winter Wonderland, a stop motion anime film based on the Moomins TV series. My entire high school sinking into the sea, a 2D anime film and it seems to be a independent anime film, which is interesting. The film follows a couple of teenagers riding for the school paper. The school auditorium falls into the ocean that's filled with kids and wackiness ensues. Napping Princess, The Story of the Unknown Me, a 2D anime film, a fantasy film where a girl named Kokono Morikawa from 2020 in Japan takes a nap and dreams of a fantasy world named Heartland. That's main focus is on cars. Kokone starts slipping into both realities. The film follows her as she goes back and forth from fantasy and reality. She also has to come to terms with her relationship with her father and the truth of what really happened to her mother. A Silent Voice or Shape of Voice, a 2D anime film based on the Japanese manga that follows two characters. Shoko, a deaf girl who is bullied by Shoya. It gets to the point where everyone at school starts to bully her as well and she changes schools. Afterwards, Shoya finds himself the subject of bullying as well. It gets to the point where he becomes a shut-in and strongly considers suicide. Because of the isolation, he no longer is able to see anyone's faces. Slowly over time, he begins to reconnect with people. He then decides to fix his previous sins and perhaps even gain some redemption. Of all the films on this list, along with Ernest and Ethel, this is probably the most relatable story among the potential nominees. It's a coming-of-age story with regret, depression, love, friendship, understanding, 
and Redemption. And it has a zero chance of winning, of course. Next, Wendell Horses, The Poetic Persian Epiphany of Rosie Ming, a 2D anime film based on a graphic novel by Anne-Marie Fleming. The film is written and directed by Anne-Marie Fleming as well. It was a crowdsourced via Indiegogo. It follows a young Canadian girl, Rosie Ming, voiced by Sandra Oh, with strict Chinese grandparents. She finds out what really happened to her mother and father. Okay, so that's an awesome crop of possible contenders, all varied and even though there are a ton of 2D anime films, the art styles are radically different, unlike most CGI films. So just how many of the films I know have a chance of winning the Academy Award for Best Anime Film of 2017? None of them. That's not how the Academy works. In order for the Best Animated Oscar to stay active for a given year, there has to be at least three films that get enough votes. At least one or two of them will be a foreign film, and that leaves about the American delegation having to nominate one in order to stay active. Okay, but again, why can't any of these films win? Well, a clue can be found if we look at the previous 16 winners. 14 have been CGI'd, of those 12, have been Disney or Pixar. See a theme? The two non-CGI films were Wallace and Gromit, Curse of the Were-Rabbit, and Spirited Away. It's been over a decade since a non-CGI film won. The only films that will receive any serious consideration are the ones that have a huge campaign as well as a wide release. None of the films I noted earlier will have that in the United States. Also, there are a certain type of film that gets nominated. The kid or family film. The Academy members don't see animation as a viable medium. This is further proof when over the last few years, members have been interviewed anonymously on why they vote the way they do or why they don't vote for best anime film. Reasons given, they just pick the ones that their kids like. They don't care, it's not important, it's only cartoons for kids. They liked all of them, so they didn't vote for any of them. They didn't see any of them, so they just picked what was popular. That's not good or okay. What's worse is who's eligible is actually voting for it. Directors vote for directors, writers vote for writers, actors for actors, and so on. Just who votes for animation? Everyone. Not veteran voice actors, not including stunt celebrity voices, not animation writers, directors, or producers, but everyone in the Academy. Because of this, there shouldn't be any surprise on who wins since the ones voting don't really know anything about the art form or medium they're voting on. That's why Disney and Pixar wins almost every year. They're more well-known and popular and have a huge marketing budget. That shouldn't matter though. When it comes to the best picture, popularity doesn't matter, right? It's for the best film of that year. I could make an argument that if we're gonna go by saying the best film winning, then films like Zootopia and Frozen will have lost to films like The Wind Rises and Your Name. For the last five years, a Disney film won, and I'm sorry that's going to happen as well this year. Usually what happens is whatever Disney slash Pixar film that made the most money that's nominated, that's the one that's going to win. So by that logic, if Cars 3 is nominated, then it's going to win. But if it's not nominated, then Coco will win. None of the other films has a chance. But it's just an honor to be nominated or a nomination makes for bigger box office for the film. Nope. For live action, yes. For animation, no. When a live action film is nominated or wins, it will be re-released to make more money since it has a higher visibility at that moment. For animated films, nearly all of the films are already out of the theaters. The winner, a Disney or Pixar film, and occasionally a Blue Sky DreamWorks will already have made whatever money they were going to make, or at least that's what the film studios seem to think. As for foreign anime films, they only get a very limited theatrical run in order to qualify, and that only happens at a couple locations in LA and New York. They never get a re-release. Okay, so what can be done? Well, one... Don't have this category open to everyone. If you respect the other categories and have them be more selective, then do that here. Have it so only voice actors and mayors, if it was animated in the United States, animation directors, or have more than, say, five crits in the field, that way it won't be select voice actors as the voting field. Two, 
just cancel the award. If the Academy is gonna treat the best anime film as a nothing category, then I'd rather have it not exist until some respect will be shown to the animation medium. Well, so the Oscars credibility on this issue is debatable, but the Annie's are different because they're given out by the animation industry, right? So let's take a look at the nominees for Best Anime Feature. Captain Underpants, the first epic movie. Cars 3. Coco, Despicable Me 3. The Boss Baby. Huh. Well, I stand corrected. So nothing out of the box, nothing non-CG, nothing non-Hollywood related. Also, maybe only one really good film in the mix. Only major releases and only kid, oh I'm sorry, family films. Why should I be surprised if even the animation industry doesn't take itself seriously? Why should Hollywood?